Hey bike farmers, welcome back to another episode of Tuning Up Track Hybrids with the Bike Farmer. Sorta. Of. Anyway, this is uh, one of my favorites. You should know this by now. I love these FX series treks. Um, the 7.2 I think is the best value in used bicycles. Rigid fork, Shimano hubs. Um, Good wheels, which ironically, this one needs to be replaced because we got some broken spokes here. This one's just totally failed and not worth rebuilding. Oh, maybe it is just one spoke. No, it's more than one spoke. So if it's more than one, I usually just replace it because it just means that they're going to keep breaking spokes. Um, uh, but the tires look okay. Um, the customer specifically said they wanted trader valves. I did the front one already just to kind of get ahead of things knowing that the rear is going to be a Schrader valve wheel anyway. And other than that, uh, it's just cleaning, lubing, and adjusting. Those are the ABCs of bicycle tune-ups in that order. Clean it, lube it, and adjust it. Get it back together. Um, I guess tighten it too. I like to tighten all the bolts. Um, which comes with the adjustment sometimes. Anyway, um, not much more to say about it. Except we should just get started, so here we go. Per the use. Start by taking the wheels off. I just hit a thousand subs. Thank you all who have subscribed. It's a milestone for any YouTuber, any aspiring YouTuber. It's a big deal. So, very grateful for that. It means we're off to the races. We have something that's worth doing. Um, yeah, I suppose, I mean, if I've got this in frame. Might as well just take this apart. Ooh, here's a little wubby dubby. I needed this from uh, a bike I built the other day. I dropped it. I'm going to save that. I think I can reuse it. Something else, because the customer doesn't want to reuse this tube anyway. Does not like... Uh, does not like the Presta valves. noted that tube was shot anyway okay um so what we need to do is get the cassette and the spoke protector and their trailer deal probably use the skewer um you know get everything off of this wheel and onto the new one over here on the filthy bench Everything's gonna get a good makeover here pretty soon. I've got a bit of a construction project happening. I'm gonna be putting a furnace in and I need some shop space to do it. For, I, we did an addition. It's kind of a mess. But it gives me an opportunity to clear out the shop and redo things in the off season. Pulling off the cassette. Chain whip holds it from spinning. And then the cassette wrench. I kind of made my own here. I just learned, learned enough about welding to be dangerous. Took an old seat post and just started welding a tool onto it and it's held so far. Spoke protector. And then at some point, I've been saving axles because axles are expensive and these uh, 135 millimeter axles break every once in a while and I use them as replacements if they're still feeling smooth. I guess I didn't count spokes. So the way um, spoke protectors work is if it's got four prongs, it's for a 32 hole. And if it's got three prongs, it's for a 36 hole. Another way I check, 
is I look for my valve hole, which is here where my finger is, and I see two parallel spokes here. And then if I see two parallel spokes here, yeah, here, now you're in frame. So two parallel spokes here and two parallel spokes here, um, opposite one another. That's one, two, three, four. Four prong will fit. And it cracked, but all right, I'm gonna go find a new one. All right, got a new one here. That's not old and brittle. And then take the cassette. Excuse me. Good and tight. Okay. And then got ourselves a trailer situation here. There we go. I'm gonna go get some rim tape. Okay, this rim tape has a hole, small hole for a Presta valve. So I just fold it in half. And then you have a little U-shaped guy. And I just make that U bigger. Now U bigger too. Bigger. Okay, line up valve hole. down the middle. Yeah, so on double walled rims you use cloth tape or tubeless tape works. Um, I got a bunch of this Velox stuff and I've been using it forever so old habits die hard. Cut to length. Finally gonna cut the tag and the skewer off. This tire is not directional. Slide our tube in. Got a little bit of air in the tube. I also have the valve cap in my mouth, which is why my voice sounds a little funny. See, just like this. Okay, 
I almost forgot. There's the valve cap. This bike looks to be more dusty than anything. So I'm going straight with the furniture polish. And I just spray the whole thing. And wipe her down. Okay, back on the filthy bench. This is a brand new wheel. So theoretically, it's true and clean and all of the things that we want it to be. But we don't know unless we check it. And I found that they all need a little something. Yeah, so it's not just exactly perfect. Just a couple spots. Make a couple tweaks. Just get it get it straightened out. Oh yeah, there's the wobble. I like it. I can see good on this side with the camera lights. On the front wheel, won't be a whole lot different, would be my guess. Little Dawn power wash there, you can get it at Costco. It's a degreaser. found it to be a game changer as a way to clean things on a bicycle. I actually used it to clean some leather boots and it just got it down to bare leather. I had to totally recondition everything. I mean it just like took all of the oil and wax out of the leather. It was amazing. By the time I got done, I mean, all new boots, they're nice and supple. It's really great. You know, I mean, you can buy the degreaser stuff for, that has the brand name on it for double or triple the cost or just use dish soap. A lot of powerful marketing out there that just isn't the thing you know you don't need to use microfiber towels to clean a bike either like these are just cheapo rags yeah i'm telling you these bikes from this era these fx series treks i sure do love them Really good bikes. Little detail on what I do with brakes is I take my tri flow and I just drop a little right there. That'll kind of coat the posts. And you just kind of wiggle things around. Then I'll loosen that bit of housing. 
and just take a bit of dry tri flow there and just lube the part where the noodle does its thing. That really makes these linear pull brakes happy. It's a little trickier because you don't have as much slack on the cable with the front. So I'll drop a little down here and just let gravity pull it. It's a really good time to lube all the cables. So I just relax everything. Push the derailleur in and pop this rear cable out. Loosen this whole rear shift cable system. Grab my bottle of Tri-Flow and then just put a little bit of Tri-Flow on the cables. Just all the way, just a couple drops and then kind of work it in. And when I pulled this one, I noticed that the cables kinked. A little bit of friction there, so you can just grab a pliers and straighten it out. It's hard to show on the video, it's more of a feel thing, but it's way smoother. And then, <clears throat> it's a good time to do a second wipe as you go kind of thing. A little more detail on the polishing and cleaning. It really makes a difference. Just kind of wiping as you go. Okay. And once you get it done, you can hook back up. Sometimes I'll just loosen all the cables and just do them all. It's also a good way to get get at the frame underneath them all for cleaning. I guess I'm not doing that in this case for some reason. Uh, here we are. Front brake or uh, rear brake, I mean. Just loosening this cable. I already did the back half of it. All right. Work it a little bit. We'll go ahead with the front. Pull the derailleur out. That gives me enough slack to get the housing out of its stops. See how I do that there? Little dab will do you. Get this spot here. as we go. Get under that cage. careful here we got a bracket for a trailer so it can be a little tricky sometimes
There we go. Reconnect the rear brake. Something's very rubby. Let's take a look. Yeah, I think it's the left brake pad, but both brake pads are pretty bad. Badly aligned, I should say. Badly misaligned. So it's a different wheel. So we had to do this anyway. But I'm just making sure the wheel's in straight because you gotta, you gotta start with what makes sense, right? I take my three-way here and I'm eyeballing it and I'm just making them flush right now. Um, I don't think I'm going to run into howling brakes with these pads on this rim. Just, I don't know if I can speak to it intelligently, but my bicycle spidey sense, which is relatively stronger than the average spider man says it's gonna work that already feels 20 times better but you can see we're only pulling from one side so these uh, little screws here adjust the linear springs I'm gonna back this one off a little and you can see it's pulling a little bit more from that side now now that's nice and centered we're not getting any more rubbing Oh man, but it sounded like it wanted to squeak. So, so much for my spidey sense. I'm gonna see if I can ride that out in the test ride. All right, back up front, the business end of things. So I'm holding one side and turning the other, and then see if I can do this backwards. So I don't know how you, if you can see this skewer, but we're a little bit past 90 degrees there. Turn that a little bit. A little bit past, so I'm tightening it just a little bit. There we go. So the skewer, the cam, is just starting to bind when it's sticking straight out. I don't know if you can see that. That's how I like them. And then I like them pointing backwards too. So I'm pulling straight up on the wheel and then moving the skewer back. And that feels nice and smooth. Everything's good. We're gonna hook this brake back up and see what happens. Okay, I'm make sure my housing and everything's centered in its home. And there we go, right in there this looks pretty good right out of the box right out of the gate man I guess I could tighten this one a smidge all right just gonna turn this one in a little just a real subtle little change there just in case somebody's looking. You'll see this is a moderately clean rag. It's really good for this kind of thing got some dampness so it really grabs any of the um, if there's dirt get a lot of sand here from the bike trail crushed limestone bike trails which is actually a very pleasant riding surface but it kind of makes things filthy okay Pretty good. Um, 
Another thing you can kind of do to treat your shifters, I like squirting some one step. These, the top and the bottom. You don't need a lot, just enough to kind of flood, flood things. And then even behind the shift levers here and the pivots. The one step is really thin and it's a cleaner and a lubricant. And that just makes those shifters really snappy. Oh, this one is only shifting one way. Hmm. We got a gummy shifter. Remember what I said before about how these shifters don't get gummy? Famous last words. Might have to try some tricks here. So we've already put some one step in there that sometimes wakes them back up. So there's little paws and some very fine springs. Um, the paws are like a, I don't know, it's like a little doohickey that um, it's on a spring. It's kind of shaped like that and, you know, bends back and forth on the spring and it's on a an axle or whatever a pivot and then the grease in there gets gummy and then it wants to go real slow because the springs are so fine that they can't overcome the gummed up grease and likely this bike was put in the second gear and just left there since the day it was built born it's probably never been shifted out of that gear and so when that happens it tends to um, coagulate and stop working And a lot of times with this style of shifter, the one step, just squirting one step in there, is enough to wake it up. And all I'm doing here, yep, there we go, I just freed it up. So now it's going into the third, second to third. So by doing that, it just, uh, you know, creates enough vibration with the lubricant in there that it frees up that paw. Oh man, that back brake is squeaking. It's gonna come back to bite me in the butt. I gotta know when to not say things out loud. That sticker there says seven time world champion. Trek. Lance Armstrong. Whoops. Right there. Blast from the past. Think again. Buddy. No global recognition for you. He was kind of a jerk about it. He says so himself. Then again, he also kind of says, you probably would have done the same thing. And in my opinion, he's right. I think a lot of us would have done the same thing. Maybe not been such an asshole about it, but when you compete at that level, I think there's a lot of pressure for you to make some decisions you wouldn't make in your normal life. And things were pretty toxic back then. Still are, I suppose. Not as bad, maybe. Some lessons were learned. Sport was probably better off for it in the long run. Okay, so, okay, we're over shifting. You see how the chain's jumping off the big, big cog? Right there. 
So that's a limit screw issue. Well, that's what these two screws are. So this is the bigger cog is the low gear. And usually the screws have an L or an H and an L. So this is the high, this is the low. I'm going to turn this screw in a little bit and that's going to limit how far the derailleur can push that chain into the wheel. Okay. So it's just enough now to get it up into gear, but no further. So I can't get it to wiggle any more than it's doing. Now I'm going down, which is actually going up, making it a higher gear. And all is indexing very, very well, which is what I would expect for this bike. Checking the front. So the way I check the front is I put it in the middle and then I'll go up to this extreme. And then I look for the gap on the inside of the cage in the front. And there's quite a bit of gap there. So I'm going to pull the derailleur out. And then with the barrel adjuster and the shifter up in the handlebars, I just tighten the cable a little bit just so it's not hitting. And then I check the other extreme. And God, my spidey sense was really wrong about these brakes. Um, I check the other extreme and I'm going to loosen the cable just a smidge. So you don't want it rubbing there either. So now you can access all eight speeds back here in that middle ring and it's not going to make any noise. Okay. Let's talk about squeaky brakes. So this braking surface here is very, very, very smooth. And these pads are kind of oldish, maybe a little crusty, but there's still a lot of life left on them. Um, so they're probably pretty smooth and hard too. So, and I set them up so they're hitting perfectly flat. Now, one thing you can do is take the brake pads and angle them a little bit, angle them like that. It's called towing the brake. So the toes hit first. Um, that's one way to handle squeaking, but I think it's hard to get a good brake feel with towed brakes. It's possible and I can do it. But I also think that if we just kind of, this is a really good rim to demonstrate, just kind of rough up the, the braking surface here. And the easiest way I've found is just to kind of do this. All right, and then do the other side too. So you can do this on old rims. These have, just happen to be brand new rims. They're going to wear down anyway. Whatever is behind this coating is going to be found very soon. Okay. And this is just emery cloth. You can get it at your hardware store. Sorry about that. Uh, what you call it? Action, uh, air compressor action. I just lost my emery cloth. So it's just emery cloth from the hardware store. And you can take it and get behind your brake pad too. That just kind of puts a new surface on things. And no more squeaking. I think this was an easy one, but it's got a different rub. Yeah, but that's okay. It's just the tire has this like extra thing that kind of delaminates. I don't know if you can see that there in spots. It's not a, it's not defective. It's not like a bad delamination. It's just a, an artifact of those tires. It's not rubbing when it's spinning. It's only when you're, compressing the brakes down a little bit. So totally satisfactory to me. All right, this bike is looking pretty good. Just gonna do a couple quick checks, spin the front wheel, slam on the brake. I'm feeling for a little bit of play in the headset here. And there is none. Go through and run through the gears one more time.
Check my brakes, feel the tires. All right, then grab a five millimeter wrench and anything that looks like a five millimeter, go through and give it a quick tighten. Tightening, tighten, a tighten of Allen wrenches. Bottle cages, frame bolts that aren't being used for anything. Anything that might loosen up. You can check your brake bolts, which it's very rare to find one loose. You know, just anything you see derailleur like that. Um, got an eight millimeter here to check crank bolts. Those are good. Grab the 14 millimeter and give that kick sand a snug. Woo, that was a tight one. Very nice. Um, then grab your six and take care of those bolts. If you have any sixers, um, it's always a good idea to get at this one under the saddle if you can, but I got this trailer deal going, so I can tell this saddle hasn't moved at all, so I'm thinking it's tight. And everything on this bike is really tight, um, which it's from a Trek store in Madison, and uh, it's surprising that the level of detail, I guess back in the Lance days, before really became retail-y. They still did a good job with their assembly. There's a little bit of commentary for you. Be careful at the cycling stores. I would suggest buying bicycles from a bike shop, not a cycling store. I try to be a bike shop. It's more about the bikes for me than the bottom line or moving units through. Very nice, very nice, very nice. It's just a really nice bike. And I'm calling it for this one. This was a, these are the, some of the most satisfying ones for me. I mean, it's really boring stuff, but just straightforward. This, are, this is how bikes should be built, in my opinion. Um, three by eight drivetrain gives you all the gears in the world. When it's set up properly and, you know, in this configuration, it's, it's good as gold. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. So thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you, know, the, you know the drill, right? If you like what you've seen and you want to see more, you got to subscribe and like. And click the notification bell. We got to trigger that algorithm so more people see this, uh, the more people that see it, the more motivated I am to make more of it. So that's how it works. And without you watching, um, none of this would be happening. So um, very much appreciated. Thank you so much for watching. Um, let me know in the comments if you want to see anything else. I'm following your lead, hopefully here. I'm just kind of putting stuff out there. These general tune-up videos seem to be doing great. Um, I like them. Um, it's most like my, uh, my main inspiration for this, Bob Ross. You know, he always starts with the sky and then works to the foreground. I always start in the back and move to the rear for the most part. Um, and, you know, I do the same thing to every bike. But then again, you know, this one needed a new rear wheel and uh, we had a squeaky brake. So I do, you know, change things up here and there. And uh, as we get through, oh, and this one, you know, I had the sticky shifter and we got that freed up. and. So on and so forth. There's always a little something to learn, a little something to show you. Win-win um, all around. So I'm sure we'll have another happy customer with this one. And with that, I say see you next time.